Today's the 25th of June, and I want to talk about some of the things I've learned about planting corn plots in this deer country. Today, we've got two things we're going to do on this little small plot that's down below the house here. One is going to be fencing it, putting an electric fence around it. It's a hot zone fencing system. And then uh, I'm also going to show you a tip on how to keep the critters from wiping out the outside rows of your corn. And this is something I think that most people don't realize is even happening. I noticed it several years ago when I was out scouting one of my cornfields and there was little holes all over the field and little small, you know, two inch tall corn plants laying next to those holes and they were bit off and laying there dead. And then I realized that the small critters, uh, I think crows, mice, I know raccoons do it, I know chipmunks do it, they see that little spike of corn come out of the ground and it's like a flag to them. And they go over, they dig that up, and they eat the kernel. So the, the plant is living off that seed kernel for a while until it establishes its root structure and, and uses that kernel up. But in the early stages of the growth of that corn, it's living off that kernel. And these critters know that and they see that little spike of corn stick up and it's like a flag telling them where there's a kernel of corn. So they'll dig down, bite it off, you know, chew up that kernel of corn, and then of course the, the, the plant is dead. So you get tons and tons of them. I mean, we've walked the edge of this plot already and I'd say at least 75%, if not more, of all of the little spikes on the outside row have already been chewed off. The only thing that really works is to overload them with a bunch of free, easy to get uh, corn seed. I've got uh, shelled corn in the spreader on the back of the ATV. I'm gonna drive around the outside edge and especially in those areas where the deer, or the, the critters have been digging up those corn plants the most and just spread uh, shelled corn on top of the ground. So they'll be digging or they'll be eating the shelled corn, the easy to access uh, corn and not digging up the stuff that's underground. Anything you can do to keep them from digging up the stuff that you've planted. So that's going to be pro project number one here. And then uh, after I get that done, we're going to build this hot zone fence and put it around the outside of this plot. The RTP Genesis did a good job of putting the seed in here, but it is a drill and not a corn planter or, you know, a, a corn seeder. And when you compare the difference, the drill doesn't have near as much control over depth of, of how deep the seed goes in. So you're going to get spots, and you can see it out here in this plot, where the ground was a little bit harder, the seed went in a little bit shallower, and now all this corn is standing up pretty good because we had a lot of moisture, a lot of rain. Then there's spots where the ground was softer and it went in a little bit deeper. And in those spots, there's not as many corn plants up yet. But when you put corn in, there's this really good depth for corn. You'd like to be, you know, an inch and a half or so down. So it gets some moisture and germinates, but you know, you get a, a fairly consistent rate of germination. And in that way, when your plants are uh, tasseling later and pollinating, that they're all doing it at about the same time. So you'd like to have an even stand. And this will be fine, like I said, we'll get a couple hot days, then it'll equalize its way out. But that's the one thing you see here that you'll run into when you plant corn with a drill. Real Trees Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback, America's Best Bowstrings, Drake Non Typical, Easton Arrows, Frigid Forage, Fuse, Grizzly Coolers. Hoyt and Realtree. That project took a little bit longer than I expected. I thought maybe a couple of hours, but the problem we had with this one, it was probably closer to three hours for two of us. When we put it away last time, we didn't do a very good job of rolling up the wire. So make sure that when you take it down, that you do a good job of rolling up the wire so it'll be a lot easier to unroll it next time you put it out. These hot zone systems, they're reusable. So, you know, it's a pretty good investment one time and you should be able to use it for many, many years. I think this has been out four times. This is the fourth time. It's set in stages. They're, they're separate uh, lines. 
the wires on the back, the ribbons on the front. And for some reason, the deer freak out when they see that and they don't jump over it. I don't know what goes on inside their heads, but that's some behavior that they have is for some reason they won't jump over this and then they go in and put their nose on that tape and famo and then they stay away after that. We got this project covered. Uh, there's not much more I can say about it. I need to get in out of the hot sun and get myself some lemonade and relax a little bit, but we are going to keep these video blogs coming your way. I'm not sure what the next one will be about, but somehow I'll be out on the farm here in the next week or so and we'll film it and bring it to you on the um, Midwest Whitetail Daily video blog. I appreciate you joining me. We'll see you back here again sometime soon.